Yeah. Hello, Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Take Back My Brain. Today, I have with me Dr. Chris Molda, and we're going to have a great conversation about brain health and chronic pain. So welcome, Dr. Chris, to the Take Back My Brain show. And glad to have you back on today because we had you on earlier. Yep. So now you're back. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, it was an interesting conversation we were having off camera. So it's kind of nice. We'll do it. Might as well just record it, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, because it's such a hot topic because there's so many people with so much brain inflammation and chronic pain and people can't get to the root cause of their issues. So I want to open the floor to you. Like, what do you do? What's your first yeah. thought with the patient when somebody says, you know, I've had this pain for years and years and years. Oh, and by the way, I had like three concussions. What do you, what do you <laughs> say to them? <laughs> right. So the first thing I, the first thing I usually try to do is set expectations. And, and that's because like when I was a young doctor and, and the way most, most practitioners are trained, what, whatever it is, right. I'm, I'm a trained chiropractor, whether you're a nutritionist or a medical doctor, you kind of come out of school thinking, oh, I've got the thing. And mm -hmm. as a patient, we're all looking for the thing. Like I spent five years on my health and my wife's health, wasting time looking for the one thing that's going to help, right? Right. And you eventually realize with chronic conditions, especially brain health, that it's never one thing. It's always a lot of things that you need to do to put the puzzle together. And so when somebody's had multiple concussions, I try to set them up with, hey, especially if I am a chiropractor, if this is a chiropractic patient, I say, look, we're going to deal with the physical injuries that you had, but chances are there's still some chronic inflammation and rewiring that's happened as a result of these concussions. So once we get done with this physical therapy, we're going to have to look at the nutritional side of it and then other things that can help too. Right. So let, let's um, take a step back if you don't mind. Like what would, why would getting a concussion cause chronic inflammation? Um, so the interesting thing about concussion uh, is that when you look at, like, let's say concussion and you look at whiplash, yeah, uh, and you look at the top 20 symptoms, 18 of them overlap. So ultimately your body doesn't know the difference between whiplash and concussion. It just reacts the same way. It's just a different Contact. name for brain trauma. Yeah. I mean, and basically if you look at anatomically, I mean, your brain turns into your spinal cord. So like at the top of your neck, it's still your brain. So it's a brain injury, no matter what. Um, and so one of the reasons why people don't heal is because they've had this physical trauma where scar tissues formed and then there's inflammation in the joints. And the main way that your body reduces inflammation is just through movement. You know, that's why when you're an athlete, you say, walk it off and you can walk it off. Right. Oh, bad, lubricant right? is movement, right? Movement is lubricant. Yes. That's right. That's right. So if you're not moving, then inflammation won't go away. Right. And so that's why chiropractic works. Other reasons are um, that your, your brain has a really hard time healing. It just does. You know, um, there's no such thing as a slight concussion. All concussions are technically brain bleeding and brain inflammation. And there's no can slight. Can you say that again? Because yeah. So often I hear people like, oh, I had, a, I had a slight concussion, but it was no big deal. I'm, I'm totally fine. And then they come to you with all these issues. So I want you to say that again about slight concussion. Yeah. So there is no such thing as a slight concussion, a Got concussion it. is brain bleeding and it's brain inflammation and there's nothing slight about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, also, uh, we know this with whiplash, so we can kind of extrapolate this to concussion. If you get a concussion or whiplash, you can have symptoms pop up, up to five years after the injury. Wow. Yeah. That's how long your body will deal with it until it says, I'm done dealing with it. It can be five years later. Do you, okay? do you think that is because the body doesn't have the, have the tools at the time to heal? And so it's, it's holding on to it. And then you have all these other stressors that kind of compound and all of a sudden that bucket overflows and you have more symptoms or is it yeah. something else? No, I think it is that. I think, I think um, a large part of it is, is the bucket overflowing where you just don't give your chance, your body a chance to recover to those deep neurological injuries and to overcome them. I yeah. think some of it too, is that, um, you know, for years, it's like, if you were an athlete and you got hit in the head and it was like, how many fingers am I holding up? Right. And that was the extent of whether or not you were injured or not. Mm -hmm. um, so some of it is people just ignoring an injury and being like, I am not that bad. I can, I, I'm fine. Right. 
Um, and I think for that, that, that turns more into, oh, I'm just getting older. You know, it's like, as I get older, I can't do certain things or my body's falling apart. Um, but when you get really bad symptoms, I think that that's the added stressors and the bucket overflowing. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's what I think. That's what I've observed. We'll say in my clinic after over 19 years. Um, hmm, I can't remember what the other thing you said was or asked. Oh, now I forgot it too. See, we must need some brain work today, right? <laughs> uh, so, um, let me see if I can remember. We were talking about, you know, why there's that brain inflammation pathway with concussion. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Sorry. So um, the brain is just one of those very sensitive things, obviously, and it, and it heals very slowly, if at all, you know, because your brain is a whole cluster of nerves and nerves um, can heal, but they take time. And so it's a matter of giving your body a chance to heal. And I think one of the things that you and I were talking about was chronic pain and how 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 it manifests itself neurologically. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. What, what we've been able to observe. And so just as a rule of thumb, if you have extreme pain and you don't knock that extreme pain down within 24 hours, your body starts to build train tracks for it. Meaning your body holds onto it and begins to want to feel it and it becomes a habit. And so yes. when you're dealing with yeah, it's very interesting. So when you're dealing with chronic pain, when it's intense pain, um, doing whatever you can to knock that down within 24 hours. I mean, I'm not a medical doctor, so I can't prescribe medication, but that's why they will give you narcotics to be like, let's get this down to a two or three really quickly. It's not because it's going to help you heal. It's because it's going to prevent long-term repercussions to that injury. So it, it, what, or what you're saying is it's going to prevent that pathway from forming? Yeah. That pain pathway from forming. If you get that pain down quicker. Yeah. Very quick. So like, imagine you have a broken leg, like you're, you're, you're riding horses or you're playing sports and you get a broken leg and you go to the hospital, they're going to give you an IV for a narcotic to make you feel better. They're not just doing it because they just don't want to hear you bitching and moaning. They're doing it because they don't want those pathways to become permanent. Right. So that you don't have that dull ache in your leg all the time. So you can actually recover and not feel it again. Right. So what it what is that path? Here? What's forming there that would create that constant pain cycle? Um, I don't. So it's been a couple of years since I've kind of looked at this research. So I don't know if there's anything definitive, but one of the things that happens and it's kind of like um, you, you create more nerve, you just create more pathways. Right. So like, oh, let's okay. say one pain nerve going to that part of your leg, when you injure it, your body's just like, oh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Let's just make more right? to try to heal. But then it's kind of like overly excitable or. Yeah. I don't know if it's, I, I can't think of, I can't think of a good explanation for why it's doing it to heal. I think it's just one of those things where um, it's responding to the pain. It's and a survival it mechanism of the body. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not doing it right away. It's not doing it after day one, but it starts to do it after day two and day three, because okay. it's kind of like your body's calling for it. Right. And so maybe your body is saying, Hey, you need to pay attention to this. So we're going to amplify it and we're going to make it more pronounced. So you do something about it. Right. Sure. Like, um, one chick engine light didn't work. Let's give you three and see if you'll actually pay attention now. Mm -hmm. Um, and pain nerve. So there's a lot of different types of nerves. Um, yeah, this is like going deep into the woods, but anyway, yeah, your body just creates more pathways to make it in a simple terms, your body just makes more pathways. And so it becomes a habit and it wants to feel pain. The, the obvious example to this that I always tell people is that phantom leg pain. So okay. imagine if a diabetic got their leg cut off and they wake up in the middle of the night, like, oh, I've got leg pain, but they don't have a leg. Yeah. It, it's because there's nothing stimulating any, anymore. It's just your body's memory and those pathways are still firing. Like your body wants to fire. Yeah. 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 So that's what's happening in the body. And what happens in the brain, which is what we were talking about is, is that as you get more input into the brain, as there's more communication going to the brain, your brain wants to give more resources to it. Mm -hmm. So I think when we were talking, what I was saying is, is like, let's say the, the pain, uh, the part of your brain that's responsible for pain is about the size of a peanut. We'll say it's just the size of a peanut and all of the pain in your brain goes there. And that's how your body responds. But when you have this chronic pain or you have a lot of pain, uh, your body recognizes it and it says, oh, we need to, we need to move, um, give more resources to understand this pain. So that pea size region of your brain for pain grows into a tennis ball. 
Okay. And so now your brain has more resources to deal with that pain. Um, and this is when it becomes chronic, right? And so when you're dealing with chronic, chronic, chronic years and years and medication doesn't work anymore and chiropractic doesn't work and acupuncture and none of these physical therapies work, you can start to turn into these brain retraining, um, neuro-based, um, biofeedback, neurofeedback kind of things. And the reason that they work is because what they're trying to do is they're trying to shrink that tennis ball back towards a pea size or, or a peanut size. Yeah. And Got so, it. yeah, so you and I kind of talked about how um, when that brain expands, it expands on other regions of the body. Perfect. And so as an example, it might expand on the right side of your brain in the artistic visual side of your brain, right? So like kind of back here where a lot of concussions are, this is the visual cortex and, and it's also um, the right side is that more artistic -y part, right? Mm -hmm. And so if the pain region expands into uh, that part of your brain, uh, you can do art therapy, music therapy, other kind of therapies where you're stimulating that part of your brain to push it back. And so that's where music therapy and horse therapy and talk therapy and, and meditation and prayer. And that's where all of these things come into play and why they work so well to actually heal you, not just distract you because some of it is distraction therapy, right. but a lot of it is literally rewiring your brain so that you just don't feel the pain anymore. And right, you're not right. being, yeah. So, yeah, that that's amazing to me. Like been studying this for a long time and I'm still in awe of how that actually happens. Yeah. You know, because yeah. your brain gets damaged and it will heal, right? It, it will heal. Um, it just takes, it takes a long time. You know, like even my daughter with her concussion, she still got from a year over a year and a half ago, you know, she yeah. still got this, this eye issue going on, but slowly and slowly, you know, all these things get better with her, but. Um, Has she ever done like the, the, um, the glasses and the eye therapy and stuff like that, like where they're doing not it. done that yet. No, I don't have anybody close that does that. So I don't have that. Yeah. So like with concussions and stuff, when it's the visual part, that's why they do it. So like, um, they have these glasses that are basically just, it's all plastic, but there's like pinholes in there and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Um, and basically it's a workout for your eye. And then as you're working out your eye and they have different exercises that you can do, depending on what part of your brain's been injured. Um, and what it does is it just works out that part of your brain again, use it or lose it. Right. And so they're really trying to get that muscle to grow and to push out the pain and the concussion. Right. And so that's why those kind of therapies work so, so well. Um, you dangerous. just have, yeah, you just have to find somebody who can, I hate using the word diagnose, but you really want somebody to be able to figure out what part of your brain is injured so that you can yeah. work on that particular part of your brain. And you're not just guessing, oh, I'll, I'll use essential oils and that will help. Well, it might not if it's not that part of your brain, that part right? Of your brain. Yeah. 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 Um, the only thing with concussions that you have to, um, limitations of matter, like when in chiropractic, we always talk about limitations of matter. And that means that, Hey, there's only so much that you can heal from. Sometimes you just do damage. Sometimes you got scar tissue. Sometimes you broke a bone and it didn't heal right. And it is what it is. Right. Um, you can still pray for miraculous healing. That's a very real thing. Mm -hmm. It can still happen, but in terms of me as a doctor, I'm like, there are limitations to what I can do and what I can expect. Right. right. So as long as somebody doesn't build up scar tissue in their brain from concussion and concussion and concussion, right. Um, they should be able to heal. They just have to find the right tool we'll say, or the right thing. Right. And don't you think it's, you know, sometimes it's a sequence, sequence of tools. So your body mm -hmm. has to go through, you know, X, Y, and Z to come back to point A to heal point A, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like your body just has to be prepared to be able to let go of that, to finish that, to finish that healing. Yeah. And for some people it's simple and for other people it's complicated. And yeah. I think it's complicated for people because there's a dance to it for some people. There's, there's a, instead of it being like a, a two digit combination, it's a 12 digit combination. And sometimes you got to go back and back and back and back, you know, because that's just what the body needs. And it's a matter of, um, as a practitioner, it's hard because we don't know. And the reality is, is that the patient at the end of the day does know more about their body than we ever will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And so yeah. we're always limited to how much the patient uh, is able to listen to their body and interpret it correctly. And like, we can help them, right? I mean, our job is to help decipher that, but right. like, it's how much are they listening 
and adapting to what they're hearing and feeling with their body. Right. And how patient they can be. Cause you know, like you said, some people it's super easy. Like you give them a dietary change and a couple different protocols and you're like, yeah, I feel like a million yeah. bucks. And then you have somebody that, you know, eight months later, they still have fire going on in their brain and you can't figure it out. And they're like, I'm, I'm just going to be this way forever. And then they're frustrated and you're frustrated. And it's just because you know, things have improved because you can, you, you have markers that say they have, you know, and the person mm -hmm. looks better, but the main thing is still there. Yeah. And it is frustrating. And it's not like, you know, you failed as a practitioner. It's just, you, you haven't gotten deep enough yet. Yeah. I think that's super hard for people is, is to know that some stuff is so deep because it's not just physical. Like you do all the right physical stuff, but there's mm -hmm. still that such that deep emotional piece going on in the brain that yeah. keeps the brain inflamed too. And yeah. so I, you know, I think we can't forget that even in my own healing, I'm like, why am I still dealing with this? Well, you got some deeper stuff, Lori, that you need to, yeah. need to dig in on. Yeah. yeah. I, and I, and, and I, at the end of the day, that is, I think what makes it hard, um, health wise, because, yeah. um, your emotional and spiritual health play such a big role in it. Oh yeah. Um, bigger than most people think. And, um, sometimes it's hard like even for me and for you, as you were saying, it's hard to know, is there a different supplement I should take or do I need to work through something? Because I can't tell right now why I have this, you know, is this symptom coming yeah. from like emotional stress or is it coming from toxic stress or is it coming from physical stress? Like what, what is the stress that I have to deal with right now? Yeah. Um, and that's the art of healing, right? There's, there's the science of healing and then there's the art of healing. And, um, yeah. I mean, when you're a practitioner like you and like me, and you're very empathetic and you want to help people um, and we walk the journey with them, it's just as frustrating for us as it is for them. And mm -hmm. it's just as exciting and happy for us when, when they heal as for them as it is for us, you know? Yes. Yes. Um, and it is about being patient and understanding that it's a journey. And, and um, I think the hardest thing for practitioners is being okay with, I don't have all the tools and I'll figure that out. I'll, well, let's figure this out together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because all the therapies we talked about, I don't do, mm -hmm. but I know they work amazing. Like they're there and people need it, you know? Yep. Yep. And then, and then you go to, well, like, well, how many therapies can you tolerate at one time? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Cause you know, especially when you're dealing with the brain, you know, like even like hyperbaric chamber, like, like Karina, she was it was great response from it. Great response. And then it hit a plateau where like, now I can't sleep. So now I need to stop doing it. You know, yeah. so what other therapy can you tolerate at the moment? So we've tried a couple of other ones, you know, and the only one she can really like grab onto right now is laser therapy. Everything else is just too much for her brain. And yeah. so just giving it the opportunity to just do what it needs to do now yeah. so that later we can add in something deeper that, you know, we'll be able to help the eye. Maybe it's her body's just fixing the eye on its own right now and it doesn't want any therapy. You know what I mean? Like there's just... Yeah. Like you said, there's an art, there's a, there's a dance to it. And there definitely, uh, yeah, there definitely is an art to it. And nobody wants to, no, nobody wants to admit there's an art to it. Really. Patients don't want to, they want to come. Yeah, they want to, they want to concrete. Like, they want the one thing or they want the one protocol. And, you know, I think, you know, after they work with us for a while, they realize that that just doesn't happen. And I don't get a lot of people that, that think that way. They're like, I know it's multifaceted. Yeah. And at the same time, deep, I mean, I still want that. I'm like, just give me the one thing. I'm so tired of taking supplements. And that's yeah. what I do. That's what I do yeah. for like a nutritional therapist. And so I, I don't like taking supplements either people, um, but I have to, you yeah. know, cause it's just the world that we live in. And if I want to just be strong and healthy and be a great practitioner, yeah. that's what I do. So. Yeah. I'm not a patient person just by nature. And so this has been, um, it's funny. I was talking with somebody about it and it was kind of like, you know, I definitely was steered in this direction. I wasn't looking to be a chiropractor. I wasn't looking to be a doctor. In fact, when I was younger, I was like, I never want to be a doctor. And, and I was definitely, you know, God's hand was steering me in this direction. And sometimes I'm like, I don't understand why I'm here when it goes against my nature. It feels like sometimes, right. you know, and right. I'm talking with somebody and they were like, well, that's why God put you here. It's not just for your patients. It's for you too. Right. And so right. I'm constantly working on my own patients and my own expectations of my own health and being like, okay, cause I'll, I'll put somebody on like a two week, three week, one month protocol and I'll do myself and I'll do it to myself. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, is I done? And it's been like three days. And I'm like, right. I'm doing this forever. <laughs> and this sucks. Yeah. That's so, a tough protocol. <laughs> yeah. Like this. 
I'm done with this, right? Right? No, damn it. Um, I I enjoy being as transparent as I can. Um, I enjoy working with patients when they understand that I'm working for them and I'm working right. with them, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not doing it for them. And um, like at the end of the day, I think after 19 years, I've realized that I have expectations for patients, but ultimately I'm helping them with whatever their expectation is, right? Right. Like I've had plenty of patients where I've seen all these markers get better, but the one thing that they want hasn't gotten better. Just that one thing, right? And and sometimes it's weight, you know, even though, as you know, weight is like one of the last things that gets better when you're health, like you have to get healthy before you'll lose weight. So it's like, that shouldn't be your main concern because it's going to take time. Right. Um, but it's the but thing I'm, that's very overt and in your face every single day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, skin, weight, um, smell, th those kind of things like are in your face and you're like, you can see them every day, but they also are like one of the last things to change. And they're very good indicators that you've, that you've healed over time, but mm -hmm. it's not going to happen like after a week of, you know, it, there's no magic pill for that. Right. Right. So swinging back around to the brain inflammation, like when somebody has got this chronic brain inflammation going on, what, do, what is, what are some things that you like to do with them to start with? Um, sometimes it, it, it does depend on how it manifests itself, right? So yeah. brain inflammation is the number one um, cause of chronic inflammation. So usually, um, if somebody does have brain inflammation, there's chronic fatigue associated with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and we were just talking about this too. It's like, but that doesn't mean like, you don't know what's causing the chronic fatigue, right? The number one cause of brain inflammation is gut dysbiosis and gut inflammation. So it's like, you go right back to the gut, right? right? So I would say there's a good chance that if you've got brain inflammation, that you've got gut issues and you're deficient in something. Totally hundred percent. Right. So you have, so for me, it's like, I always ask people, what's your chief complaint? Because that's a good place to start. Because if it's if it's not gut related, we might not do gut stuff. If it's energy related, then we might go in a different direction or we might do gut stuff. Um, but just in general, I, I'm always thinking, even if you have, by the way, if you have a concussion, you get leaky gut within 30 minutes. Oh, I guess it, mm -hmm. it is measurable. It is a known fact. If you work out strenuously, you get leaky gut. Like it's so crazy all of the stress that you put on your body and your brain and how it, how it bombards your gut mm -hmm. um, with stress. And so like, it always comes back to the gut. It always comes back to, Hey, we have to look at your diet. We have to look at healing your gut. We have to look at leaky gut and the microbiome and probiotics and all of these different things. It's always going to come back to that. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of brain inflammation, I love to start with doing uh, red light therapy because it's the quickest way to increase your energy in your brain. Um, and then <clears throat> I, because I'm a chiropractor, it's just what I do. I always like to at least go through a 30 day protocol with people oh, to yeah. adjust them and see how they respond and get their movement better and see, mm -hmm. can the body heal itself without me doing too much? Like that, that's such yeah. a low. The body thing, is right? designed to heal. Yeah. Right. It, right. Remove so, the interference, give it what it needs. That's right. And so I, that's, that's always my thinking. And it's like, let's do the least invasive to the most invasive in that order if we can. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then we move and, and, and after that we'll move towards, um, hormones, we'll move towards deficiencies from, you know, a gut imbalance and deficiencies. Uh, and, um, by the way, when I say gut, I always, I don't just mean your stomach and intestines. I always mean your liver and your pancreas too. Right. And right. your kidneys. Okay. Technically they're all your gut. So it's, it's how you digest and break food down. Um, and those are kind of the big things. And I think if I'm not missing anything, that's kind of everything. Like it is <laughs> like, it's all systemic, right? You have to deal it from right. deal with it head to toe. Yeah. But I mean, in really simple terms, it's like, we just said all the things we have to look at. So there's like no missing pieces there. Mm -hmm. There might be some new therapies that come up, that come about to do certain things or new ways to use vitamins or new ways to do certain things. But at the end of the day, um, we know the organs that are involved and it's a matter of removing the interference, which is going to be a toxin, which is going to be a negative thought or a negative pattern, or it's going to be the crappy food you're eating, or it's mm -hmm. going to be the sedentary lifestyle you're doing, right? Like that's right. kind of it. It's one of those things. It really is. Um, we just happen to live in a complex world <laughs> with complex toxins and complex stressors and people don't know they're toxic and people don't think they're stressed out and people think they're relaxing and they're not relaxing. And it's, 
it's 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 uh it's about being aware of what's really going on in your world and identifying those things and you've experienced this and i've experienced it and this one once patients realize that oh that's the thing that's holding me back and they deal with it mm -hmm. you do see a seismic shift all of a sudden absolutely right? absolutely yeah completely um, and then it's time for healing because you eliminate the source of it and they feel better and then it's just time and then mm -hmm. you just have yeah, no, I agree. It's so good. So yeah. good. Anything else you want to add? Um, no, I mean, I love this stuff. I really do. I mean, it's it, to a certain extent, it's kind of like, why do I love this stuff? But I love this stuff, you know? I mean, <laughs> I've had my own health journey. I'm still continuing on my own health journey, just like you are. And it, this is just the way I think. And for me, it just comes down to, it comes down to the, the, the bold, realistic belief that your body wants to heal itself, that God did not make a mistake. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be as complicated as people think. It can be much simpler than, than um, what people say. And um, I see it every time and I just get so excited. Every time I see it, it's like another miracle. You know, it's like, aha, it is true, you know? It is true, yay. It is true, it absolutely is true. And every time I see it, I love it. And so I think that's what keeps me going is seeing yeah. those miracles for everybody. I love it. I love having these round table, yeah. you know, quote unquote discussions with you. Cause it's so good. So yeah. good. So hope all of you enjoyed that. Thank you, Dr. Chris. And we'll have another topic sometime in the near future with Dr. Chris again, cause we always love it having him on. Thank you everyone for listening. Make sure you like subscribe, share, do all those fun things on social media. Cause I want the word to get out all over the place. Thank you for listening. Be healthy, be happy. See you in the next episode.